We got uh, several godless heathens uh, waiting. Uh, William in Omaha thinks that he can prove that there is no God. So this will be fun because I'm probably going to disagree with you too. Mm -hmm. But welcome, William. Hi. Uh, hey, Matt. Uh, hey, Jenna. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, Matt, I wanted to ask you about that card magic book you mentioned earlier because I'm an amateur magician too and I didn't get a chance to write down the name. <laughs> uh, you should already know it. It's The Expert at the Card Table by S.W. Erdnace. The Expert at the Card Table. Thanks. And Jenna, I just wanted to thank you. Uh, you were... Uh, Part of you, you were somebody who helped me find a uh, secular therapist for my anxiety. Oh my uh, God. So I just wanted to give you that thanks up front. Oh, um, thank you. It, Hooray. Yeah, so uh, to, to, to the meat and potatoes, um, okay. I think I can offer a uh, deductive argument that there is no God. Absolutely uh, no think, God uh, anywhere. How are we defining God? Okay, so I'm going to add some nuance there because uh, you're totally right. Uh, it, with any uh, good logical argument, there needs to be definitions. Uh, so I'm defining God to be uh, an all-knowing being. That's and any God that fits that sufficient definition would be uh, part of the scope of, of of this argument. So, so let me and, play. Let uh, me. I'm let, defying. Let me play pocket apologist for a second. <laughs> okay. By all-knowing, are you going to argue? So, modern apologists, when it comes to the omnis, would say. You want my definition of knowledge. Uh, well, hang on. Would say that God okay, knows so. everything that can be known. That, that is not logically inconsistent. Th that maybe there are some things that cannot be known, but they couldn't be known by anyone, God or not. So if you're going to argue that there's something God couldn't know or for a contradiction, um, modern apologists would just say that that doesn't do anything because God has all knowledge that is possible. And that's what makes it unfalsifiable. Yeah. I, I, I have heard that. Uh, the way I'm going to structure this argument is I'm going to talk about knowledge as justified true belief. I understand you have a different definition, but for That's the fine. sake of what I'm talking about, sure. I, I'm just going to use justified true belief. Um, Go for it. And what I'm saying is an all-knowing God is a God that knows all true things uh, and has a justification for all true things that it knows. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, if I'm, uh, so this is a proof by contradiction. Uh, it's a sure. way of structuring an argument where you use a uh, an argument uh, or a premise that you're trying to disprove. Right, reductio ad absurdum. And then should, yeah, uh, P implies not P implies not P. Gotcha. Um, so uh, my first premise is that uh, the incompleteness theorem holds. Um, the incompleteness theorem is a uh, mathematical theorem uh, that I've learned about um, sure. at my time at uh, university. Uh, and it basically uh, states that no axiomatic system is complete and consistent. Uh, for the sake of what we've kind of been talking about on the show, or what you've been talking about on the show, rather, uh, consistent can just mean sound uh, for the, the, the sake of what we're talking about. So no axiomatic system is complete and sound. Um, and uh, <clears throat> if... Uh, Excuse me, uh, I'm just going through my notes. Um, uh, the second premise would be uh, there is an omniscient God. So those two things, you could come to the conclusion that the incompleteness theorem necessarily has to fail. So the theorem initially proved that piano arithmetic is uh, impossible to be uh, completely understood in the sense that there will always be questions that we will be able to ask that cannot be answered within uh, the math system that we're working in. So if there is, uh, say... Uh, this isn't going to this isn't uh, going to disprove that God. So first of all... Uh, it would, it, if God knows everything, then he knows all of piano arithmetic. And if he knows all of piano arithmetic... Un unless have unless it's, it's, it is unknowable, that's the point. God knows everything that can be known. If, for example, if the incompleteness theorem is in fact correct, which, you know, it's it's one of those things that you couldn't prove anyway, which is why it's, in, in any case, if there's something that cannot be known, then you can't well, you use that to... The incompleteness theorem. You, you can't use that to say uh, God could know, because God can't know this, therefore God isn't all-knowing, because that that's why I was trying to point out at the beginning that modern theologians would, would argue that God knows everything which can be known. And so if something can't be known, then God doesn't know it. It's just like, it's the same as, it's, it's these very 
primitive notions of, oh, God is all powerful. It's a bit of hyperbole because you could say, oh, well, God, can God create a rock so big he can't lift it? Can God create a burrito so hot that he can't eat it? And so modern theologians recognizing this and saying this doesn't in any way disprove a God. All we're saying is God has all power that is possible. God has all knowledge that is possible. So you're not disproving any God that anybody actually is advocate or that most anybody would advocate for in any serious context. Oh, I, I totally agree with that. And I just want to say, I want to endorse street epistemology as a way for actually convincing people. I think this is just an interesting deductive argument that concludes that there are no omniscient gods. And if I was engaging with an actual believer, I wouldn't use this argument uh, because it's not very convincing. Um, but I would say that uh, so, uh, so I would disagree with you on the on the point that you say that um, God uh or that most people would say that this doesn't count because it's not possible, because really what we're doing when we're doing mathematics is we're trying to discover what kinds of axioms we want to use as we're going forward uh, in working in mathematics. And the point of the incompleteness theorem is that there's always going to be some axioms that you ha would have to add on to your set in order to answer sure. any given question. So, so um, basically, so if you, you called in to present on. an argument that you don't think is going to be convincing, that definitely does not address the best versions of God from actual thinking people, uh, not like the man on the street, the person who doesn't know anything about philosophy or fallacies or contradictions or anything else. I, I don't want to argue, I certainly wouldn't spend time constructing an argument against that any more than I would spend time trying to put an argument together um, uh, about somebody's um, belief that pixies are, um, you know, the the core structure at the center of the Big Bang. So well, it, it seems like this is a, just a big waste of time. Arithmetic. It seems like this is just a big waste of time. You are arguing, you are presenting an argument that you acknowledge isn't going to be convincing to the man on the street and certainly isn't going to be convincing to anybody who has any better understanding of God. So what's the point? Uh, well, I was just kind of calling in because I think this is where you and I may disagree. I feel comfortable calling myself a, a Gnostic atheist because I believe that this proof uh, or this argument is uh, a way to demonstrate that there isn't a God that no, can it's do not basic arithmetic. It, it's not a God. It's not an argument against any sort of God that is beyond kindergarten theology. That's what you've disproved, and this shit was dealt with millennia, centuries ago. Well, the incompleteness theorem wasn't proven. You didn't need it then. You, all you needed ago. was, God cre can God create a rock so big he can't lift it? Boom. Oh, wow. Well, that's not what we meant by omnipotent. And it, the same thing applies to omniscience. You're, you're essentially okay, saying, yeah, fair enough. Like, you're, I, you're I, saying I, we've I, discovered that there are things that can't be known, and therefore, if, the, if somebody says there's a God who knows everything, that God can't exist. Yeah, so what? We already knew that. Okay, yeah, uh, that's that's a, a, a fair criticism. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, as with any logically deductive argument for the existence of God, you necessarily have to use the God in the premises, and then that leads to people redefining what they mean by God. Uh, just like the problem of evil is a a right, but uh, you argument if you've constructed an argument against something that hasn't been a mm -hmm. serious presentation for a god in centuries. Okay, I mean, uh, if, if like that, it, that is okay. That, did, uh, did you bother? So one enough, of the things is, uh, it's of course, it's not going to be convincing. Mm -hmm. But it's also irrelevant because if you're going to sit down and you're going to have a conversation with somebody who has bothered to look into any of this, um, they're going to say, mm -hmm. at what point did I say that my God knows everything, including things that can't be known? Well, but clearly there are some things in axiomatic systems that can be known because we know them. Okay, Th then God knows those things, but he doesn't, pointing out that he can't know some yep. things that can't be known. But if he knows some of those things, there necessarily must be a question within that framework that could be asked that he would not be able to know. And nobody would be able to know it is the point. If there's an unknowable, if there's a question for which it is the answer is unknowable, then God wouldn't know it either. And so what? 
Well, okay. So if uh, that, that that that's a fair point. Um, uh, I'll, 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 but you you make you make a really good point, and uh, I I definitely wanted to have any fallacies uh, pointed out uh, if they're there. And you know, it's not, it's not so much a fallacy. It is you are arguing against a definition that has already been kind of tossed out ages ago. With even before we had Girdles and Completeness Theorem and, and other things, because it's like, can God make a married bachelor? Oh, uh, you know, these things which lead to a contradiction, which is why for ages, theologians have offered that, first of all, it's difficult to point to anything. Like, let's take the Bible. The Bible doesn't say that uh -huh. God is omniscient, omnipotent. None of those words are in there. It suggests right. that by suggesting that God knows all things. At no point does it suggest God knows things which are unknowable. It's just God knows things that we don't know. Like the, the theist would come back and say, God understood Kirtle's incompleteness theorem before anybody and before it had ever been thought of or suggested. That's what we're, we mean by a God being sure. essentially all-knowing. Well, I... Okay, I, I, I see. I see what you're saying. Um, but what I'm, tr I'm what I'm trying to say is that if if God and I could come to some agreements, like say the piano axioms of arithmetic, there would be some questions that I would be able to pose to God that He would say, "I don't know." Would you know and the answer? I guess, like, I, of course not. Okay, so how is that an argument against God knowing all things that are knowable? Well, I don't have to know all things that are knowable. God right. has to know all things that are knowable. But if, now, if God told you that there was an answer, how would you prove him wrong? Uh -huh. How would you prove him wrong? Well, there, there does have to be an answer. A proposition is either true or it's false. No, a proposition is either true or not true. Okay, yes, true or not true. And technically, what it is, logical negation. what it is doesn't mean that we know what it is. And whether or not you or I know or understand what it is doesn't mean that. And, and if, in fact, we think that we can't know, then essentially we're saying that if an answer is proffered by someone else, that that answer must necessarily be unfalsifiable, at least in theory now by us, which doesn't prove that God doesn't know all things that are knowable. I, I agree with you. Maybe uh, if I gave a more concrete example, what I'm saying might be a little more clear. So there is a proposition in mathematics called the Riemann hypothesis, completely unknown if it's true or false, but it could be put in pro in, into a propositional statement. And you and I would agree, probably, that it's either true or not true. Uh, we don't know the truth. I can now. agree that, that now. Yeah, and so if... Uh, God knows all things, he would know the truth value of that claim. If How do you know if that? If it's knowable, if the truth value is knowable, whether or not something has a truth value is independent from whether or not that truth valuable value is knowable. Can you say that one more time? Whether or not something has a truth value, which everything would if in yeah. the true, not true, um, it, it is independent from whether or not that truth value is knowable. Yes. And whether or not we know is independent from whether or not a God knows. And so all of these things mm -hmm. don't line up to the point where the only God that you can disprove with an argument like this is a God that has been defined, as already defined in such a way that it's susceptible to logical contradictions. But if modern theologians are saying that God has all power that is not logically impossible or that God knows all things that are knowable, then that removes that contradiction, the potential from it. It makes God unfalsifiable. So, uh, uh, so if, you, if you try to claim that you're falsifying an unfalsifiable God, you've already made a mistake. Uh, I, I don't think that's exactly what I'm trying to say. No, so you're trying, I, to, you're trying I, to define I, God in such a way that it's falsifiable and then falsify it, but your definition of God is problematic. So, okay, I hear what you're saying. What I'm trying to say is, um, uh, excuse me, let me, let me gather, gather my thoughts for a second. I, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, what I'm trying to say is that um, if, as, as mathematicians, we uh, want to add on axioms, and in the situation where we don't know the truth value of something, uh, mathematicians will sometimes say, well, if we add this on as an axiom, if we assume it's true or assume it's false, what happens? 
Um, and uh, it, if we're talking about any kind of system, um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a little flustered. Uh, I, I may have to call back later. Okay. okay. It's one thing you might want to dig into whether or not it is uh, locally true versus globally true. Um, because there are things that are true within a system that aren't true with, outside that system. So, but in any case, essentially, if somebody, true, but even if you, it, essentially, no some, how many axioms you are. Sorry. If somebody defines their God, such, you know, you're trying to build a straw man and knock it down of a particular mm -hmm. God. Big deal. Mm -hmm. That's a piece of piss. Nothing to it. Been done many times before. How would you fall? How would you show that an unfalsifiable God? How would you falsify the unfalsifiable? And if so, if if modern theologians would say God knows everything that is knowable, and you don't know what is or isn't knowable, you can't know. You can't show that God can't know things that that are are knowable. Wait. You say that last part one more time. I'm not sure that I'm not sure that I said that exactly correctly. If they've defined their God so it knows everything that is knowable, that's an unfalsifiable proposition. We don't know everything that is Correct. knowable because we don't know what's knowable. But if they say God knows everything that's knowable, then you would have to show that there's something that is knowable that God does not know. And how can you show what God does or doesn't know? Because if you know it, wouldn't God know it? If I knew it, then God would know it, yes. So, so this thing fails like at I, several like different I levels. Know, so how, like I, how I know the axioms of arithmetic, God would also know those axioms, right? And the ones that you don't know, you can't prove that God does or doesn't. If you know it, then by, okay. by definition, something that knows whatever is knowable knows it too. Yes. Okay, yeah. I mean, like, I, I agree with what you're saying. If I know something and there is a thing that knows all things, then, of course, that thing would also know that. If, if anything is if, known or knowable, mm -hmm. they're saying God knows that. So I think this kind of plays into why I wanted to use the justified true belief um, definition of knowledge doesn't matter what the definition of no doesn't matter what the definition of knowledge is. Anything that is knowable is they they are proposing that God knows it. How could you ever show that God doesn't know something which is knowable? Well, okay, yes. If you narrowly define the God outside of. Uh, to, to, yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. Yes, you can change your definitions of uh, of what you know God is, and to be able to get out of any argument you choose. Which happened a very, very, uh, very, 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 very long time ago. What you're trying to do is to yeah. build, build a straw man of a God in order to knock it down, and that's that's the reason why you already recognize it's not going to be particularly convincing, because it doesn't map to what people believe or what the best thoughts about a God are. Okay, I mean, okay, I see, I see what you're saying. I guess, like, with where I, with with the people who I'm interacting with, they do kind of have, I mean, this idea that God could know everything. That, well, okay, I, I, I won't say that. I don't want to put words in in, in somebody else's mouth, especially because they're not here to talk to you. But if they're wrong but, about if they're wrong about what God can know, and you can show that, are they going to stop believing in a God, or are they going to redefine God such that God knows everything that's knowable? and not that God can create a burrito so hot he can't eat it. Well, of course they're going to redefine what God is. That's why I'm having this conversation with you instead of with a theist. Well, no, see, you're having a conversation with a former theist, and you're having a conversation with somebody who cares about making sure that we're arguing against the right thing. You might, If, if you walked in and you said, uh, God makes the sky pink 24-7, and I can prove that that God doesn't exist, what good does that do? But people believe in gods that know all things. No. So, oh. They say that. 
they so first of until all until you start questioning them specifically like can he create a burrito so hot he can't eat it and then they say well he knows ev-, that's when they they justify it as they go and they've justified it over thousands of years and they justified it and so they've basically found every straw man that there is and found a way to define it in a way that it is unfalsifiable if you ran across someone who believes the thing then your argument would be fine However, mm-hmm. no, most of these people don't know what they believe. They haven't given it any thought. And you're not arguing against anything that represents good, rational thought. So you might as well be saying, well, the village idiot down there believes that the earth is flat. So if I can show him the earth is flat, I've proved that, you know, or show him a fallacy in his argument. This is almost the fallacy fallacy. What you're arguing against is somebody's concept of God in their head and then suggesting that if they r- refine that concept— that all they've done is lead the evidence where it goes. And all they're really doing is acknowledging that, oh, they had expanded God beyond the realm of of what is logically possible, and now they're gonna put it back in the box. But you haven't disproven a God at all. I I hear what you're saying, and like I I, I do get the criticism, and it's it it is valid. But isn't that kind of the nature of a reductio ad absurdum argument? By the end, it does look absurd. Yes, that's the fucking point. And so if you said there's a God that's who makes the I'm sky saying. sky pink, okay. I, William, I'm going to call into your show and say I'm gonna, I can just prove, I can prove there is no God as long as we define God as that which makes the sky pink 24-7. Oh, nobody believes okay. that. Well, there's a guy right. down the street over here who believes that God makes the sky pink 24-7. Therefore, I've disproved God. No, you haven't. You've proved that that guy is wrong. So I, I would agree that I haven't proved it to that person, but in the sense that I have supplied a... I, okay, well, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I, if, if, I, I'm done. We're, over, we're, we're past time. i got 